Now let us leave everything aside and just focus on our exception handling. So here I am taking a simple example in which I am taking a result as none and then I am taking two input from user and converting them into int. After that I am calculating their division and storing that into my result and just printing out my result. This code looks fine, let me run this one. The first number that I am going to give is 50 and the second one is 10. You can see I was able to achieve my result in float. So things look well, but what if I try to give 50 and 0, then I must be getting a 0 division error like I was getting in my terminal. So this was the error that I was getting. 10 by 0, I got a 0 division error. So let me try this one. Here I gave 50 and then I gave 0 and I got a 0 division error that is divided by 0. As soon as we try to run this command, our first few lines are executed and as soon as I got an error, my program stops. So here I got an error on line number 5 and after that my program stopped and all the lines after that haven't executed because we haven't handled this exception. So we got an error, we got an exception and we are not handling that error. So Python usually breaks out. So even if I try to print something here and run this one again, you can see I still got error on line number 5 and after that I was not able to print my line number 6. That means Python break out because of this error, because of this exception and then we are not executing a single line. So we need to handle this particular exception. For that we use try and accept. In Java, in C, in other different languages, you might hear about try catch. So here in Python, we use try and accept. Let me do that. Let me shift this line and on whatever line we are trying to handle that exception, we just need to add a try block. That means I'm writing try and all the codes would be inside this. That means all the codes which can have an exception would be inside this. And then we need to add a accept block. So that means if we are going to get any error, then we are going to get inside this accept block. So let me print a simple message error with our code. This looks fine. Let me run this one again. You can see now what I am doing is I was trying to handle this exception. So there was an error on line number 5 but it haven't printed that. So it get inside my accept block. It printed this line error with our code and then it moved forward with our execution without any problem. So that's how we handle our exception. Now remember as you know we have a exception class which is our base class. So we can use that particular class to print which error we are getting. So here all you have to do is you just need to define your exact exception class or you can just define the base class of exception. Here you can see our IntelliSense is already giving us lot of suggestion and most of them are about errors. So I would be using our base class and you can use as keyword and then say it as E. So now I can also print our reason of exception. So it would be carried with this E. Now let us run this code. Here you can see we got an error. This is my line error with our code and this was the message by our exception that is division by zero. So that's how you can handle. Now you can also print out the type of this. Uh, let me remove this one and print out the type of our error. So all you have to do is use type and we just need to pass our E. Here you can see I got my zero division error type. So that means at this point of time I am getting this particular error because of this class. Now if I try to give different input maybe some string. Now let me remove this one because at this point of time we are already converting them to integer and change our input and take input as integer float string and then try to run this one and what if I give a string and divide it by a number I might get an error. Let us do that also.
let me give a 50 and then give a string. You can see I got a type error. So with the previous example, I was getting zero division error and here I am getting type error. So with our main class, that is with our main base class, we can handle all the exception. But what if I just want to handle one particular error? Maybe I just want to handle this type error. So I can use just type error as E and then I can print that. So I can directly use my type error instead of my base class and I can use that and without any error. You can see now I am inside my type error, but what if I give now 50 and zero, that is zero division error. Let me see what I'm going to have. And I'm still getting type error. You realize why? Because we are taking both as string. So you have to take care about this during your example also. So let me just add my int here. Now this looks fine. That means now I'm not going to handle this type error. Earlier I was just dividing my 50 as string and zero as a string. Now let me clear this up. Now you can see I'm not handling my zero division error because here I'm just handling my type error. So this zero division error is actually breaking my exception. So what I can do is I can also add a uh, except block for my zero division error. Let me clear this up and run this one. Let me get 50 and zero. Now you can see I'm inside my zero division error and then my line and then my result. So that's how we can handle different type of error specifically. So you might have some different message for type error. You might have some different code for your zero division error. If you have everything same, then you can remove everything and then you can use base class that is exception. And here you can give specific error. I hope now you understand about how to handle exception. We use a try block and we use a except block. Try block contain the code from which we can expect errors. Except block carries the code to handle our exception. Now the second thing is we can use our exception class that is our base class to define exceptions. We can also use specific exception classes like type error, like zero division error, and there are all different. So we can use except multiple times to define different type of error. If you have any doubt that why we are using different except blocks, think about as a website. When you have 404 error, that is page not found, we throw some different error. When we have 500 error, that is server not found, we throw some different page or different error. When we have something like 300, that is some different error. And when we have 200, something like that, our server code, that means all okay. So that's how we divide errors. And this was really important for you to understand how to handle different errors. So that's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about try, accept, else, and finally. So see you in the next one.